gastroesophageal reflux disease affects approximately 20 to 30% of the population when one defines it as at least weekly symptoms. Clearly, therefore, the numbers are higher when one includes patients experiencing symptoms such as heartburn regularly, but perhaps not weekly. We can't and shouldn't scope everyone who experiences acid reflux. Therefore, who exactly should we scope in this context? This table from the ASGE Standards of Practice Committee is certainly a good outline for the indications of upper GI endoscopy in the context of acid reflux. Now, when performing an endoscopy for patients with reflux, it's important to counsel them that around about 50% of patients with reflux symptoms will have an entirely normal endoscopy. Thus, a normal endoscopy does not exclude the diagnosis of acid reflux. However, conversely, the findings of uh, esophagitis or Barrett's esophagus positive findings of reflux does diagnose acid reflux with high specificity. Therefore, in these patients where you have these positive findings, a pH study is not necessary if uh, that's a route you're thinking of going down. When doing an endoscopy, really anywhere within the GI tract, it's important we talk a universal language and thus adherence to known classification systems is important. Most commonly in the context of esophagitis, the Los Angeles criteria is used and this is outlined here. Therefore, if I were to find esophagitis at endoscopy, I would use this criteria to describe what I'm seeing. I would also ensure that I mark the presence or absence of a hiatus hernia on the report, as of course this is important for further management. We must remember, however, that the diagnosis of hiatus hernia at endoscopy is actually not very accurate. You need to have at least two centimeters gap between the gastroesophageal junction and the diaphragmatic pinch, and a heel grade of at least two or more. Be careful not to overdiagnose a hiatus hernia. In the context of esophagitis, I would not perform any biopsies unless I was concerned the appearances were perhaps malignant. This could be perhaps deep or irregular ulceration or perhaps ulceration occurring more proximally in the esophagus. I would consider a biopsy in an immunocompromised patient in order to look at other causes of uh, the esophagitis outside that of acid reflux such as CMV. It's important to remember in patients who have severe esophagitis, that's grade D using the LA criteria, uh, have appropriate follow-up. We want to ensure that anyone with esophagitis has uh, appropriate uh, acid suppression, but those with severe esophagitis need to have uh, appropriate acid suppression, that's high dose PPI for six to eight weeks, and then a rescope. You're looking there to ensure adequate mucosal healing, to exclude malignancy, but of course also we know that about 10% of these patients with severe esophagitis will have underlying Barrett's esophagus on rescope. That's of course a, a crucial diagnosis to make. Finally, if you are performing an endoscopy on patients with reflux, particularly those with also throat symptoms, it's important to document the presence or absence of an inlet patch. Remember to diagnose an inlet patch, you do so on extubation with your image enhancement on.